Uh, hello and welcome to Open Logic. This is System Verilog in 5 minutes. In this video, we'll talk about thread, which are fork and various joint syntax. We can use several initial blocks to create parallel running execution. In this example, these two initial blocks run in parallel. One takes 10 nanoseconds and another one takes 20. Imagine if you want to do C after A and B, you need to know when A and B finish. Well, this example is too easy because we hard-coded the delay, so we can easily delay C accordingly. But imagine if the delay is random or unknown, it would be difficult to put C at the end of A and B. And that's how fork join construct helps. In an initial block, everything runs sequentially. You can add a fork join construct. Everything in the construct will run in parallel. In this example, A and B runs in parallel, and C runs after A and B finish. And to visualize it in a timing flow, A and B start from time 0. At 10 nanoseconds, A finishes, B has not finished and continues. At 20 nanoseconds, B finishes. Now everything inside the fork joint construct is done, and C begins execution. And this is the same code as before with extra thread. A, B0 and B1 start at time 0. At 10 nanoseconds, A and B1 finish and at 20 nanoseconds, B0 finishes, and C begins to execute after that. Let's say we want A and B to run in parallel, and we want B0 to run first, and B1 to run after that. We can use a begin-end block within the fork join to create a sequential execution. In this example, A and B0 start at time 0, A finishes at 10 nanoseconds, and B0 finishes at 20. And this is also where B1 starts, B1 will continue for an extra 10 nanoseconds, and then C will kickstart. Apart from fork join, there are two other similar constructs. This is a fork join any construct. It is the same as before except that it uses join any. Join waits for all threads to finish. Join any waits for any one of them to finish. In this case, A and B start at time 0. A finishes at 10 nanoseconds. B has not finished then and continues, but because of join any construct, C will kickstart at 10 nanoseconds after A. One common use case of fork join any construct is timeout mechanism. The example here is waiting for a reset or timeout when 100 nanoseconds hit. Let's say reset comes first, the code will move on from the fork join any construct. The problem is that the timeout thread is still ongoing. To stop the timeout, we can put a disable fork statement here. Now, this is a fork join 9 construct. Fork join 9 does not wait for any of the threads. It launches the threads within and continues thereafter. In this example, A and B start at time 0. Without waiting for A and B to finish, C also starts at time 0. After that, A finishes at 10 nanoseconds and B finishes at 20. Now, let's say for some reason, after launching the threads, we would want to wait for them to finish. We can use a wait fork statement here, but this would make fork join 9 the same as a fork join construct. Now, fork join 9 has a unique capability. Looking at this example, it has three threads. Compared to the other, fork join 9 is the only construct that can be written in this manner, where every thread has its own fork join 9. It may seem redundant and repetitive, but it can be further refactored. We can use a task to execute a fork join on, and then we call the task to launch a new thread. If we refactor the task call further, we can now run any number of threads instead of the hard-coded one. This dynamic thread creation is a fork join on construct capability. The only gotcha is you must use automatic keyword in the task. Let's look at the one example without automatic keyword. Here we call this task three times every time we pass in a different argument value. We thought that every call gets a unique value, but there is only one argument. We call the task three times and the final call decides the argument value. So all threads print the same message where the argument value is 2. With automatic, argument is created per task call, so at the end every thread will get a different argument value and print its respective message. Alright, that's it for this time around. Thanks for watching. Do help to support by clicking like, share, and subscribe.